Congratulations, you've made it to the third and final setup video. By this point, we have installed main stage, as shown in the first video. Then, in the second video, we installed Key Studio and downloaded the main stage sound library. In this video, we are going to set up our physical hardware to work with main stage. First, if main stage is open, go ahead and quit out of it. As a general best practice, you should connect your gear to the computer prior to opening main stage. In fact, I like to foot stomp this rule because it can save you a lot of troubleshooting and headache in the future. So once again, before you open main stage, make sure everything is physically connected to the computer first. Before you start connecting your gear, I want to note that depending on your computer and how you choose to connect everything, we may need to use a USB hub. If you do need a USB hub, make sure that the hub is externally powered. Your computer's motherboard can only supply a certain amount of power to USB devices, and if that threshold is met, your devices might lose connection. An externally powered USB hub will solve this potential problem. Let's learn about connecting a keyboard to the computer. The first thing you should know is that almost every keyboard out there supports something called MIDI. Your keyboard needs to send MIDI data to the computer to tell it which notes you are playing, what velocity you are playing those notes at, and whether or not you're pressing the sustain pedal. There are really only two ways most keyboards connect to a computer, either with a USB cable or with a 5-pin MIDI cable. Depending on your keyboard make and model, it may have either of these options. A lot of modern keyboards even support both USB and 5-pin connection methods. If you have the choice between the two, I generally recommend using a USB cable. They tend to be easier to find, and a USB connection will often be able to provide power to your keyboard as well. If you are going the other route and using a 5-pin MIDI cable, you have a few options. You could pick up a 5-pin MIDI to USB cable, which will allow you to connect directly to your computer. Or, if you have an audio interface with a 5-pin MIDI in port, you can connect your keyboard to your audio interface, and then use your audio interface's USB connection to connect to the computer. The thing to know about using a 5-pin MIDI cable is that on the keyboard, you will always want to make sure to connect to the five pin port labeled out. This allows the keyboard to send MIDI data out to the computer. If you are using an interface, you will still connect to the keyboard's out port, but you will connect the other end to the interface's in port. You can think of it as directing MIDI traffic out of the keyboard and then into the interface. The interface will then pass the MIDI data along to the computer over its USB connection. Side note, it's common to get the in and out backwards, so double check that you are plugged in to your keyboard's out port and into the interface's in port. If you have any other MIDI devices like a Korg Nano Control or something else, you will connect them to the computer in a similar way. If you are going to use an audio interface, connect that to your computer as well by using its USB port or some audio interfaces don't have a USB port and they will actually connect via Thunderbolt or Firewire. Just check in the manual to see how to physically connect the audio interface to the computer if you are confused. Another side note, if this is your first time using MainStage and connecting hardware, we recommend not using an audio interface just yet, as it does introduce more variables to your setup that could require slightly more advanced troubleshooting. We recommend starting without an interface and then when you feel more comfortable with main stage, you can incorporate an audio interface. Now that we have our MIDI controllers connected, we need to connect our audio output device. There are a few options for connecting your computer to external speakers. I'll briefly cover those now. First, you can just use the built-in headphone jack to send audio out of your computer. If this is your first time using main stage, I highly recommend this method because it doesn't introduce any other variables that we might have to troubleshoot. So for now, you could just plug in a pair of headphones, make sure your computer volume is at an appropriate level, and you'll be good to go. Side note, don't ever use Bluetooth headphones like AirPods, because there is a significant audio delay associated with wireless Bluetooth headphones. Instead, use headphones with a cable 
that you can plug directly into the headphone output. In the future, if you are connecting your computer to a PA or a sound system, there are other cables that let us utilize the built-in output to send sound out. The other option is to use an audio interface. And we've touched on an audio interface a few times in this video. And while we don't recommend starting off with an audio interface because it is a bit more complicated, it's a great option for sending sound out of your computer. You would connect the audio interface to your computer and then plug in headphones or connect balanced cables to external speaker monitors. Now that we have everything physically connected and powered on, open the Key Studio concert file. In case you forgot, you can find it by opening your music folder, then your main stage folder, then the Key Studio folder, or if you added a main stage folder to your favorites pane, you can get to this directory even faster. After the Key Studio concert file loads, in the top left corner of main stage, click the layout button. This brings us to the layout mode. In the layout mode, we can assign our physical gear to the controls on the screen. Let's start by assigning our keyboard. First, click on the keyboard in main stage. You can see that we have selected it because there is now a blue box around it. In the left pane, click on the assign button. The assign button turns red, and this means that whatever MIDI device we physically touch or move will be assigned to our on-screen keyboard. Now, press a few keys on your keyboard and you should see that the on-screen keyboard keys respond as well. Now, click the red assign button again to turn it off, so we don't accidentally assign something else to the keyboard instead. If for some reason your keyboard isn't sending MIDI data, try restarting your computer and then following the steps to assign your keyboard again. If you still run into issues, please consult the manual for the make and model of your keyboard and audio interface if applicable, there may be a driver you might need to install, or there may be a process to enable your keyboard to send MIDI data. This is a somewhat common thing, and the manual will tell you if there's anything you need to do to enable your device to send MIDI. Okay, now if you have a mod wheel on your keyboard, let's assign that. I'll click the mod wheel on the screen to select it. Then I'll click the assign button. It turns red, indicating that we are ready to assign a physical control to it. Then I'll move the physical mod wheel to assign it to the on-screen mod wheel. Then I'll click the red assign button to finish the assignment. Side note, you can only assign one physical device to an on-screen control at a time. So if you accidentally assign something to the wrong thing, just click assign and then assign the correct device and then turn the assign button off. If you are using a Korg Nano control, then a lot of the on-screen controls will already be assigned for you. So there is no need to assign these. However, if you are using something else to control the on-screen controls, then you can assign these using the same assignment process we just used. Side note, there are some controls on screen that you may not want to assign. For example, we recommend that you do not assign the gain stage and octave shift area dials. For most users, we recommend at least assigning all the buttons, knobs, and faders in the six slots. We recommend assigning the previous and next patch buttons, and we also highly recommend assigning the panic button. There are other buttons and knobs that may make sense for you to assign as well, but you are always free to come back and assign these whenever you'd like. When you are done making assignments, click the edit button at the top left of the screen. This will take us to main stages edit mode. The final test to make sure everything is working correctly is to play a few notes on our keyboard and then make sure we hear sound back. In the left patch list, click on the patch titled My First Patch. It will be highlighted in blue to show it is selected. Now play a few keys on your keyboard. You should see the on-screen keys move as well, and hopefully you will hear sound as well. If you don't hear any sound, Click Main Stage, Preferences, Audio. Then, in the Output area, click the drop-down and select the audio output device you are using. If you are using your Max headphone port or your Max built-in speakers, choose Built-in Output. When you change audio devices with this drop-down, it may take up to a minute or more for the computer to process the change. Don't worry, this is normal. If you are using an audio interface, choose that device from the list. 
If you don't see your device, it either is not connected or it may need a driver. Refer to the manual or website for that audio device to see what you need to do to get it working with the computer. Now, we will exit out of the audio preferences window. Try playing some notes again. If you hear sound back, then you are good to go. If you still don't hear sound, double check that your volume is turned up either on your Mac itself or on the physical audio interface. If at this point you are still experiencing issues, please restart your computer and then rewatch this video. It is pretty likely that you missed a step that you may catch in the second time through. Okay, at this point, if you hear sound back, we should save our work, so click File, Save As. Choose a directory where you'd like to save this concert file. We recommend staying organized and saving concert files in the main stage folder. Give the concert file a new name, like Key Studio First Concert, and then click Save. Congratulations, you have finished the setup lessons and are now ready to move on to learning all about Key Studio. At a bare minimum, you will want to watch the next video to get an overview on how to use Key Studio, but we highly recommend checking out all of the videos if you want to take full advantage of what Key Studio can do for your keys rig. Remember, if you run into any issues, please check the troubleshooting area on this webpage. Chances are you will find a solution there. All right then, when you're ready, I'll see you over in the next video.